Uh, let me just plug myself in. Everyone's grabbing their seats. I hope you had a nice time since I saw you. It seems so long. What have you been doing? Everything good? You solved the problem. A couple of people have come up to me and told me excellent solutions to the problem, and I'm really pleased. Actually, even more than being pleased that you solved it, and I'm incredibly pleased that you solved it, what do you think I'm really pleased about? Yeah, that you tried. Yeah, yeah. But you might as well do it early and start fooling around early. Fooling around, experimenting, that's what we love. I don't care if you get things right or not, I just want you to try and fool around and experiment. That's the attitude we want. C getting right, well, we do care, but that, we'll get there eventually, but we'll never get there if we don't try. We, we started, we finished the last lecture talking about the program, the, four, the microprocessor, the 4003. Let's have a quick look at it again. Going to the schedule, this will be a very familiar path. Schedule, and then from the schedule, I'm going to the lecture notes for today. Let's resume talking about addition. So here's the microprocessor, here's what it looked like. Let me do it on this board over here. We wanted to write a program on our 4003 which would take two numbers, let's say one number's in register zero and one number's in register one, and add them together. How nice it would be if we had an instruction to add two numbers together, but we don't. We've got to make do with these silly rules we've got over here, which seem so innocuous and weak and pathetic. All they can do is add one to things and take one away from things and test if something's equal to zero. But we can still do it, and some people have very cleverly done it. Let's, you guys tell me how you do it. What's your plan? Someone call it out. Check, yeah. yeah. Then if not, you keep adding one to one and decrementing the other one to zero. I like the way you're thinking. Okay, here's a visual representation of that strategy. Now, that's not necessarily the only strategy, of course. Okay, you found one way, you've written the program, I hope you then kept going away thinking, oh, I wonder if I can do it in a better way. But that's, that's a good way of doing it. <laughs> Let me show you with Chalk what he was just saying. I'll do it. Uh, uh, oh, actually, I'll do it on the overhead projector. Look at this. <laughs> It's actually got a use. I thought these things had no use. All right, here's R1. It's got three in it. Here's R2. It's got two in it. The blue ones are R2, the white ones are R1. <laughs> now, your strategy was, just say it in English. Yep? Your bottom one's only got one. Bottom one's only got one blue one. There's only one blue one on the bottom. You're very good. Were you able to see that from up there? Yeah, from, from up there, you would be able to see it, yes. If you <laughs> You're very good. He's good. All right. I was tricking you. <laughs> okay, yeah, so now tell us your strategy. Um, you increment one and you increment the other. Oh, God, what, how would you say that in English? That's a very low level. That's a computing way of doing it. Yeah, we're at a low level of abstraction. Let's move to a high level of abstraction and describe it to your mum. What are you doing? You add one to one register. No, you're just saying it in the same different words. You're saying the same thing. That is what he's doing. I just want a different description of it. Yes, you move it from one pile to the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can you see it's the same. You're describing it. But one, you're giving a low level one. So we move chalk from one pile to the other. So you're saying, I need to add these two things together. The only if I've got is testing what? If R0 is 0. So which pile am I going to make smaller? R0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, did I say this was R0? Um, I wonder if I can write on this. I don't have a, a marker. Okay, let's say, oh, no. All right, let's say this is R0. So what all I'm going to do is I'm going to, because you know if you've got two piles of stuff and you want to add them together, as long as you just move things around, that you've got the same total number. You know, that's the thing you learn when you're in kindy. It doesn't matter how you arrange the objects, the fundamental number of them is the same. So I'll just take one from R0 and put it in R1, which is the same as decrease that by one, increase that by one, and then I'll check if that's empty. Is it empty? No. I'll do it again. Is it empty? No? Okay, I'll do it again. Is it empty? Yeah. Yes! Now I want to print out the answer. How am I going to do that? I've got to swap them, because the only thing I can print out is, as you can see, oh, we're doing two layers at once. Can you see? This is like multiplexing. <laughs> can you see very faintly hidden under there? Um, uh, print, seven. Only prints R0. So we want to print out the number, and they're all in R1, but we can do a swap instruction. Instruction five, that'll swap them around. And then we do a print instruction. And then, just because we can, we're going to do a, a beep.
All right, cool. You guys are already awesome programmers. Uh, so let's, let's write that program out. Let's see what it would look like. We've done it in a fairly high-level description. Now let's write it in this really precise, pedantic set of rules. Now, one problem I realized is we have no way of getting values into R1 and R2 to R0 and R1 to start with, which is annoying. Um, so let's actually stick some numbers in, and that'll waste a little bit of time. So what if I wanted to put... Um, what numbers do we want to add together? Three and four? No, that's too hard. So that's even harder. <laughs> One and one. I like the way that man's thinking. One and one. Let's do that. Let's always start with it. What's the easiest case? Zero and zero. Oh. Now, we've got a problem with zeros. Let's start with one and one. So, we're going to start everything all zero when we turn the machine on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the numbers into R1 and R0 we want. So, how do we put a one into R0? Let me uh, get rid of this thing. One. A 1 will do it. It increases R0 by 1. And then we want to put a 1 in R1. That's a 3. Okay. Now we're ready to add them together. What's the first thing we have to do? Someone, someone said test. What were you testing? Check, now check if which one's 0. Check if R0 is 0. Okay. So how do we check if R0 is 0? Instruction. All right. 9. If it's 0, what do we want to do? Jump to the end wherever that is. And what are we going to do at the end? Print it out. Beep. Uh, and beep. Okay, how do we print it out? Five. Oh, you've got to swap. Swap, thank you. You've got to swap because think about it. R0 is empty. R1's got some stuff in it. So we don't have to move anything across. We don't have to do that trick of moving things from one pole to another because the R0 pole's already empty. So now we've got to do the rest of what we said we do at the end, which is swap everything from R1 over to R0. Yeah, move it over to R0. And then we print it out. We can, you're, looking, you're not looking happy. Does it not make sense? It does make sense? Does someone want to ask me a question? Uh, yeah. Yes. Why don't you just move everything from R1 to R0 and leave R1 empty? Why don't we move everything from R1 to R0? Ah, yeah, that's a good thought. Uh, in other words, why when we're moving from one pile to another, are we doing it the dumb looking way of moving everything into the pile R1? Because at the end, we've got everything in R1 and we can't print R1 out. But can you think, there is a reason for that. We can't check. Yeah, we've got to know when the pile's empty, and you can't check if R1's empty. So if you're moving everything from R1 to R0, you, you won't know when to stop. So that's fine. Well done. Good question and good answer simultaneously. So we're going to jump to the end. At the end, we're going to swap them around. That's going to put the right value in R0. Then we're going to print it out, which is a 7. And then what are we going to do? Oh, now we've got a problem if we did this, though. What's the problem? Yeah, when it gets to this instruction, what's it going to do? It's going to try and execute this. It's going to go back to the beginning. Yeah, that's not good. So maybe let's just move everyone along a little bit. Pretty bored, doesn't it? <laughs> Blackboards don't work as well as a computer when you just backspace and everything. It's along. So we, uh, uh, what did we do? We did a 5, a swap, a printout, and a B. And then stop the whole program. All right, so that's our end. This is cell 0, 1, 2, 3... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes. Uh, thank you. Oh no no no! Oh, hang on. Um, can I come back to that in a sec? That's a very good question. It's a very good. Question. Let's just do the, the initial jump. If it's um, uh, the initial jump was, if it is 0, we're jumping to the end, and the end is instruction 12. Can you see that? <laughs> now, your question, which is a good one, is, hang on, what are we doing at the beginning? We're, we're adding to R1. Didn't you say we were moving from R2 to R2? But, um, this is, uh, remember I said the embarrassing situation was, I'd asked you to write a program. Um, we, I've asked you to write a program to add the two registers together, but we haven't worked out any way of getting numbers into the registers to add. Yeah, we need some other way of getting numbers into the registers. So what we were doing was we were just doing an initial um, 
one, to put the number one in the register so I can show you that one and one is two. So it's not actually part of our program. It's really just a setup thing. Maybe I should draw a line. This is the setup part, and then this is. Ah, because um, that's a good question. Did everyone hear that? What's the point of checking if it's zero if I know it's not zero because I've just put a one in there? Because I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of thinking of this as like an input area to the program where the data comes in, and I'm thinking of this as the program, and I sort of want this to work no matter what numbers you put in here. Does that make sense? R0 was 15. Well, we'll wait and see. Oh, no, R0 starts with zero always when you turn the machine on. No, because we'll have turned the machine off and turned it on because it'll have halted. It's like Windows, this machine. It just does one thing, then you turn it all off, you reinstall everything, and then you do another thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I didn't mean to be mean about Windows. I love Windows. Uh, so here we go. We're loading one into R1, we're loading one into R2, and now, once that's all set up, we're going to show that we know how to add one and one together and get two. So first of all, we're going to check if R0 is um, zero, and if it is, we're going to jump to the end, swap them around, and print them out. Ba-bum! Just one comment, you don't so, have What's that? You're going to run out of bits. You're going to run out of bits. Oh, no, I'm going to have heaps of, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> Wait and see. So, now we're going to... Do our trick. And remember, our trick was what? We decreased R0, which was, how do we do that? And then we increased R1, which was, so I'm moving something from the R0 to the R1. Hey, and I really don't mind people talking. I think it's quite good. But as long as you're talking about this. If you're talking about this, that's fantastic. But if you're talking about something else, because other people are constrained trying to get it. Yep. You also have to check if R1 is 0. No, why do I have to check if R1 is 0? I'm not subtracting from, look, 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 we'll do it here. It's so abstract when we say R1 and R0. Let's move back to lump of chalk. This is how I write programs. I don't try and work it all out in my head because I always get confused. I draw pictures to help me get, see what's going on. So this is R0, this is R1. And remember our strategy is to move from R0 to R1 until R0 is empty. Now notice that strategy will work even if initially R0 has nothing in it, R1 has nothing in it. I'll just move. It might be more efficient. I don't know. It depends what you mean by efficient. You don't have to go through and then swap them. Yeah, but you've got to do that test every time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, we'll talk about efficiency later. At the moment, we're just hunting correctness. Um, and we've got plenty of time. What we don't have in our 16-byte machine is plenty of memory. So we're decreasing our 0, increasing our 1. We've moved it across. And now we just have to check. Check if it's empty, if we've emptied R0. And if we've emptied R0, what do we do? We jump to the end. So that's what? 9. Oh, why don't we do 8? Now, what does 8 do? If it's not empty, we're going to jump on not empty. So if it's not empty, we've got to keep going. So where are we going to jump? Jump back to 2. Uh, I think... Look, it looks okay to me. Does it not look okay to someone? Oh, oh, I love the way everyone's thinking and trying to work it out. Look, this is, there's going to be many programs that solve this. We could debate it forever, but let's run it because I actually have here a 4003. Now, is someone connected to the internet? Who is? Someone wave at me? Yes. Could we just put this on the internet? Thank you. Just, just, just put it there. Okay, cool. Now it's on the internet. We can all access it. <laughs> so let's go here. Here it is. The 4003. Let's run it. We're going to upload the program. Uh, so we're going to type our program in. Can someone call out what the program is? One, three, three. Sl slowly, what? One, One three, three, nine. nine. I, you just, can I just say this is every computer science lecturer's dream? To be in a classroom where we're just calling numbers out to each other. <laughs> Remember that time we did 13912 and I thought you were going to say 13911? That was the best lecture. Okay, all right, let's keep going. So 13912, 2, two three, 3, 8, eight two, 2, 0, 0. Oh no, there's a whole lot of zeros. Everyone's mumbling zero. There's 
Four zeros. Hang on, shh, shh, shh. five, seven, six, zero. Is that our program? What do I do? What do I do? Shh, 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 shh. Wave your hand if you want to say something. Yes, person at the very back. What would I put in there? Put beeps in there. This is so exciting, isn't it? All right, let's get, we'll get there in a second. Let's just try it with zero straight away, initially. Oh, I will right, we'll put beeps in. I just hope we don't get overcome with a wave of beeping. Think about what's going to happen. Is everyone thinking about what's going to happen? Here we go. Shh. We've uploaded the program. I better check we've got volume. Let me, if, I, if I make donks in, can you hear that? Yes. Okay, here we go. On your marks, get set, run. That's incredible. It worked out that one and one is... <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, I don't know why there were two beeps there. Did the beep break? Let's try that again. I was only expecting one beep. Hang on, we'll reset him. Run. Definitely got two beeps. That's very interesting, isn't it? Now, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And that's how you get the output for the program. Is that what you mean? What do you mean? Yes. Oh, you want to just hear what it sounds like with lots of beeps. You guys just want to go beep crazy. All right, let's do that. Let's just save that program somehow so I don't lose it. Let's run a new program, which is just what? doesn't look like a very nice program to me. Upload it. Shh, shh. There's something weird about the beeping on this program, isn't there? I asked it to beep 50 times, beep once. Uh, I think you're right. It collapsed. You guys debugged it and solved it. I really like the way you did that. But it might not make sense to everyone. Shh, 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 shh. So here's what I'm going to do, because I know you're itching for it. I'm going to give you this. It's already on the internet. Would you mind just keeping that on the internet, maybe for the next couple of weeks? Okay, I'll try. Okay, don't touch it, though. Uh, no, just because it might be static. Um, so we've given you the link for this. You guys go and write some programs and check it out. I've got to say, this program isn't the shortest edition program I've ever seen. I wonder how small you can make it. Don't count trailing zeros as the length of the program. So I'd say this is a 15-byte program. Yep, it's all 16 except this last one. Can you make it smaller? I think straight away you could probably work out a way of making it four bytes smaller. But can you make it even smaller than that? How small can you make this program? Don't call it out. Just go for it and experiment. It's awesomely fun. What we really needed, though, to make it all work was uh, an add instruction. So if I take you to the 4004, there we are, here's the 4004. It's exactly the same, except look what it's got. It's got two instructions to add things together. We lost the swapper. But it's got some exciting new ones. Look down the bottom here. All the ones down the bottom are two-byte instructions, yeah? So you give, like for example, when we wanted to jump somewhere, we, the jump, number nine, was a two-byte instruction. The first byte is saying jump. The second byte was the address, remember, to say where to jump to. These are all two-byte instructions. 10 says, take the second byte, whatever it is, that's a number, and store it in R0. So if you said 10, 4, that would put a 4 in R0. Does that make sense? 11, 4 puts a value into R1. So we could do that at the start of the program to get values in. Um, 12 and 13 are interesting. They're two-byte two instructions. The second byte tells you the address of where you want it to write the value, and it'll write from the register back into memory. So you can write, from, you can get stored numbers in the registers and you can write them back out to memory. 
which means you can do some interesting things like store things that won't fit in registers, or you could even change your program, right back to the program and change your program on the fly. So if I said 12, 6, what would that do? No, it wouldn't set R0 to something. It'll copy whatever's in R0 and put it in address 6. So all the other things we've got from so far have been here going up to here. But 10, uh, sorry, um, uh, 12 and 13, take these values and write them back to memory. You can give them an address and they'll write them out to that address. And 14 and 15 are similar, but they do a swap. So if I said 15, 3, what does that do? Swaps what's in R1 with what's in address 3. Yeah, does that make sense? Using this super duper computer, well, it's very easy to write an add now, isn't it? Because it's got an add instruction. Can you write a multiply? Here's some challenges. Can you write a multiply in the 4003? Can you write an exponentiator in this one to calculate x to the power of y? Can you write a program to work out if a number is a prime number? Can you write a function to add 3 to a number? Gee, there's all interesting questions. So I want you to just take this thing home and play with it and try and do some simple things. In your labs next week, there'll be some challenges to try and write programs. I guess the main thing I want you to do is if you can get that add thing working, that'll make me very happy. So you saw our solution to add. Full round yourself and try and come up with your own add on the 4003. And um, if you have a bit of extra time, full round with the 4004. We'll give you links to them both. They're all on the internet. And that's fantastic. OK, now are there any questions before I move on? Yes? Oh, that's a good question. What's the shortest number of bytes you can use? It's, well, if you knew what numbers you were adding in advance, it would be a one byte program. <laughs> Say, if I knew you were adding 3 and 13, I could just have a one byte program that said print. <laughs> And that would print out the next thing, which is 0. Oh, no, R0, which is initially 0. I'm just being silly. So uh, that's a, not a very useful add function because it only deals with that specific case. So actually, forget I said I was just being, does everyone realize I was silly? There were a whole lot of anxious faces there. An actual add function should take two numbers and add them together. It shouldn't just work for one pair of numbers. It should work for all numbers that you wanted to add together. So I'm sorry, it's being flippant. And the, the question from Howard, it's Howard, isn't it? Is a good question. What's the smallest size you can get? I'd be interested to see what you guys can get. I've, I've got a small one, but maybe you can get smaller. Every year people do better than me, so let's see how we go. What's the smallest? Well, this is a new chip this year. We've changed the chip a little bit each year. Uh, is, is the smallest one, is don't say it. You're going to say a spoiler. No. You are, I can see. You got that look in your face. No, don't tell anyone. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, sorry, I see what you're saying. Oh, does, it include, <laughs> does it include the input? Um, let's assume everyone has the same amount of input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, sure. I mean, I just really care about this part of it. Yep. So, let's assume you've just got two numbers here or something. Do you require the beep? I don't require the beep, no. But it'd be sad to lose it. <laughs> but if you think it'll make your program shorter, you can take it out. Okay, so that's just my challenge for you. Now, are there any questions? Does everyone feel confident that they could go home and fool around with this and get it adding two numbers together? Because that's really what I want you to do. Do the best you can. Ask questions on the forum if you can't do it. But just do the best you can. Really, I just want you to try. And if you try, you'll be astonished. You should be able to do it. But even if you don't, the, the lessons you learn in trying to do it and having problems will teach you interesting things. I actually write all these programs not using the emulator. I actually just write them on pen and paper and I step through the thing on pen and paper to see what's going on. I find the emulator confuses me. I like running in the emulator at the very end to see how it goes, to double check it. And the emulator does have a nice little step button. I don't know if you saw that. And every time you press that, it'll just do one instruction at a time so you can sort of track what's happening. But I actually do it all on pen and paper. So this is a really nice exercise. You could, I used to do this last year. I just did it in bed. I was lying in bed. We had a challenge and some of the students started beating me in the challenge. And I was going, oh, no. My reputation as a lecturer is on the line. So I was, and they were high school kids. And I was going, oh, I've got to make mine better. So I was just, I'd lie in bed going, oh. And then eventually I'd go, oh, I got it. And I'd just scribble something down and I'd go to sleep. And I'd type it in first thing the next morning. And then some high school kid would go, that's pretty good, Richard. But he's one, one better. And I'd go, ah. 
And never did I use a computer, it was all just pen and paper. Because what we're doing now is problem solving and thinking. It, the computer's just there to sort of help us by doing the boring work. But we can do the boring work for this with pen and paper because there's not, there's not much of it. You're not executing many instructions. But seriously, if you do have a problem, just let us know that there's a problem, we'll fix the site up. There will be teething problems at first because we're moving to a new site, but its awesomeness will more than compensate for the initial annoyance of these oops problems, is my, my hope. Huh. I think I said all that without taking a breath. Yes. Yes, at the moment we've got 16 bytes. Bytes, bytes. Yeah, yeah. So each, the word bytes a funny one. It doesn't really have a standard meaning. A byte is just like, um, well, it's like I've drawn it here. It's an area of memory that you can refer to by name. That's addressable, we call that. So I can say, give me numbers, the 0th byte or the 10th byte or the 15th byte. How big it is sort of varies, uh, or could in theory vary, but on most computers nowadays it seems to have stuck at 8 bits. So most people think uh, each of these bytes is 8 bits big, which means each of these bytes is a number between 0 and 255. But on our simple computer we've got a 4 uh, bit byte here, and there are only numbers between 0 and 15. And if you don't know what a bit or a byte is, don't worry, because we'll talk about that next week when we do binary. Um, so, yes, yeah, so they're bytes. Uh, are there any more questions? This year, in the course, we are having a puzzle quest. Because when I was thinking long and hard last year about this course coming up, thinking, why isn't a course fantastic fun like a book? I tried to think of all the fun things I've ever done. And I saw that movie, National Treasure. Has anyone seen that movie? Yeah. And although it's got that actor that I really don't like anymore in it, <laughs> Nicolas Cage, who I used to really like. I don't know what happened. I'm just getting old. Um, it was really fun. I thought, I wished I'd been on the National Treasure. I, my wife and I were going to have renovations to our house recently, and we got an architect in. And it was going to cost lots of money to do the renovations. So he's saying at the front, tell me what you want in your house. You're going to be spending lots of money. I think it was like more than half a million dollars. We didn't do it. Okay. But it was just some ridiculous amount of money. I worked out eventually I'd have to work an extra 20 years to pay it off. And I thought, do I want a nice house or retire 20 years early? No. But anyway, so we got the architect in there. He's talking about it. He's saying, what do you want? And he said, can you write down what's really important to you and what you want? And my wife's saying, we want an extra bathroom. We want to be able to get from this room to that room on floor, <laughs> rather than having to take the rope, <laughs> things like that. And I thought, and I thought, and I went for a long walk and thought, what do I really want in a house? If, what would be the most important thing for me in a house? And I realized that I've grown up and I'm sort of much less interesting now, and I, life should be more interesting and more fun. And I was thinking, what would I have wanted if I was a me boy? You know, go back to when I was 15 or 12. And, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> And I worked out the best house, and I came back and I showed him all the stuff. I said, I want a fireman's pole. I want a secret corridor with pictures with holes in them, in the eyes, so I can look through. I want a, a, a library full of books with a bookshelf that you can pull and open and get in. I want a cupboard full of cloaks that you can walk through into a magical other land. <laughs> Or failing that into the backyard. And in the backyard, I want a big lamppost there for no reason at all. I'd really like a turret and a tower. And he said, OK. And he went away, and he came back with a house with lots of bathrooms. <laughs> and I was really disappointed. And so I think it's easy. And I, would you work for another 20 years so you can have more bathrooms? No. You, maybe you would do it for a fireman's pole. Especially if it was like the one in the bat cave that can go back up. That's fantastic. But uh, I didn't think of a bat cave. I'd like my driveway <laughs> to be like the bat cave. A garage with an opening door that actually looks like a rock wall that swings up. And the pool can open like the Thunderbirds. You see, when you start thinking about it, there's this incredible thing. I want secret rooms and passages and treasures. So I was thinking, that's what life should be like all the time. I don't want to have a boring life. I want to have an excellent life. So I thought, I want this course to be interesting. Now, it will be interesting because we're learning programming. And programming is such a joy. When I had the tutor meeting, we were talking to the tutors, I said to them, Guys, what we've got to do in this course is we've just got to remember how much fun it is to be a programmer, and we've got to show this to them so they know. And I said, just think about it. How awesome is it to be a programmer? And I looked around the room, and everyone was sort of looking and just grinning. 
because we've all chosen the best life in the world because we're solving problems, we're having puzzles, we're making fantastic things. It's incredible. So the course should be fantastic. And I thought what will make it fantastic is having less stuff along the way worth marks and some sort of massive treasure hunt with puzzles and riddles and everything thrown all in it. So we've got it. So there's a thing called a puzzle quest that we're running throughout this course related to the course. And Google have come along and given us awesome prizes that we'll hand out at the end. I don't know what they are, but I think it's uh, eye stuff and phones and as a car. It's all sorts of incredible things. And Google will come and handle that. So we're going to have millions of stuff happening in parallel with the course that you're free to ignore and not pay any attention to at all and just come to the lectures. Or if you want, and you notice there's a little puzzle or a riddle somewhere, you might just want to just follow it and see where it leads. And you might find it leads from one thing to another thing, to a secret room hidden somewhere, to an enigma that can't be solved, to a puzzle, to a riddle, to suddenly, you know, whatever. Okay, so there is a puzzle quest, but I'm not really telling you much about it, but you might notice things about it starting to just happen. And you can work on it together or by yourself or however you want. And yeah, okay. So, yeah. Is one of the primates a no? If one of the prizes was a fireman's pole, I would steal it. <laughs> I would I would give you this awesome pianola roll, <laughs> and I would keep the fireman's pole for myself. Okay, all right. Um, so there is a puzzle quest, but I'm not going to really tell you much about it. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled. I've already given you a couple of clues to it already. Some of the clues will be explicit. And I'll say, oh, solve this, it's part of the puzzle quest. Sometimes oh, I might just do or say something strange. Not that that would ever happen. And uh, maybe that's a clue. Okay. Now we're going to take a break. After the break, we're going to come back and talk about C. What's that? Were you telling us to go to Denmark? Was I telling you to go to Denmark? <laughs> Denmark 